Hello, my name is Greg Hanley, and in the next five minutes I'll introduce a project that you can read in the upcoming issue of the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis. The article is titled, Producing Meaningful Improvements in Problem Behavior of Children with Autism via Synthesized Analyses and Treatments. And my co-authors were Sandy Jin, Nick Vance Lowe, and Laura Hanrady. Some background. Uh, members of the field of behavior analysis have developed very effective strategies for moving beyond the mere management of problem behavior to understanding why severe problem behavior occurs, thereby improving its treatment. And researchers have done so by conducting a large number of systematic replications of the functional assessment and treatment development process. To date, about a thousand distinct functional analyses of severe problem behavior have been published in over 400 uh, studies. This accomplishment was appropriately celebrated in a recent special issue of this journal commemorating 30 years of functional analysis research and practice. As any reader of this journal knows, behavior analysts are committed to detailed analysis of isolating individual factors influencing problem behavior or of its assessment and treatment. But an unfortunate side effect of this commitment to isolating individual factors is that useful procedures for assessing and treating problem behavior are often distributed across multiple studies. And this problem with the fractured nature of our assessment and treatment literature is compounded by the massive amount of this literature that the journal just celebrated. In addition, there's considerable variability in the manner in which functional assessments are conducted. The speed and the success of the initial uh, analysis and detecting function also varies across studies. And the extent to which different types of descriptive assessment or different types of indirect assessments are incorporated into the functional assessment process differs considerably across studies as well. Furthermore, once a particular function is detected, there's an overwhelming number of treatment options from which to choose. So, partly in response to these issues, we describe in this study a functional assessment and treatment process that was developed by my uh, research and practice group at Western New England University over the past few years. This model was applied to typical clusters of problem behaviors, typically referred to as meltdowns, which are often exhibited by children uh, on the autism spectrum. The article is primarily unique because the entire consultation process from our initial meetings with each of three families to the families successfully implementing function-based treatments in the home is described. Each of the three children treated in this study engaged in frequent and extended bouts of yelling, crying, aggression, and property destruction, and they very rarely complied with parental instructions at baseline. By contrast, at the end of uh, the 8 to 14 week consultation process, zero levels of problem behavior occurred at the clinic and in the home when families were implementing treatment. Furthermore, functional communication, tolerance to delays and denials uh, of their requests, and compliance with routine parental instructions, behaviors not occurring in baseline, were occurring with regularity at the end of the consultation. Other unique features of this article include a time and extrapolated cost assessment of the consultation process. So the, um, the amount of calendar days as well as the number of minutes spent assessing and treating this problem behavior until a meaningful conclusion was reached is carefully described. Multiple social validity assessments of the process are also included uh, in this article, as well as an argument for synthesizing all variables suspected of influencing problem behavior into a single test condition in the initial functional analysis. Now we still have much more work to do assessing the effects of this process on problem behavior over longer periods of time and on more global and adaptive types of functioning. But we're glad for the opportunity to share this type of article with you in the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis and we hope that there are important implications in it for your behavioral analytic practice or research. Happy reading.